So in the last episode, I lowered down this seat and now the position is just fantastic. It feels so much better. Almost feels like I'm driving in a car, which is kind of what I was going for. Doesn't really feel like a race truck unless you're sitting down low, right? Anyway, the next thing I really want to do in this interior is make a center console. I also need to move my shifter position because this was set up for when my seat was way up here. So I'm going to incorporate that into the build. But I think the way to go about this is to use some fancy technology. Let's check that out. So I recently purchased this handheld scanner. I've tested out a lot of handheld ones, uh, but this was probably seven or eight years ago, but they were never affordable. And now Shining 3D makes this Einstar scanner that is very affordable, well, more affordable. Uh, you can pick one up for about a thousand bucks. You do need to also have a pretty beefy laptop to be able to run it. So if you don't have one already, you can add that to the expense if you really want it. But I'm a nerd, I love tech, and when I'm trying to build things that meet up to irregular surfaces, it can be a challenge. 3D scanning makes that a lot easier. So I'm gonna take a scan of this floor, we'll put it into CAD, and then I'm gonna design my console and all of the structure for it based off of that scan. So let's check this out. So one of the nice things about this is that it tracks things really well on its own without having to go through the headache of trying to align things and doing things like photogrammetry. If you don't know what that is, look it up. It's part of 3D scanning, especially high detail 3D scanning of larger structures, things like that. But for the home user, this thing makes it pretty easy. So when you start scanning, it gives you a preview. And as long as it's seeing things that you think you need to scan, you should be in good shape. And you can zoom in, and then you can also change your brightness if you double click the middle button on here. And that can help you get better detail or lower your brightness down if you need to scan something that might be a little bit shiny. Now if you'll notice, there's a whole bunch of white stuff on my floor. Don't get any weird ideas. That's actually just baby powder mixed with uh, rubbing alcohol. You mix that together, put it in a spray bottle, spray your surface, and it'll release the shine, or it'll dull the surface so that it's easier to scan. This thing has trouble with shiny stuff. So I'm gonna start scanning. Now another cool feature with this thing is that it actually lets you know when it's got good data. If it's brown or peach colored, it doesn't have enough data points yet. And if it turns green, it's thinking, I know where all that stuff is. I've collected probably a lot more than I need. But that's okay, because we can go in and delete some stuff. The more you collect, the harder it's going to be for your computer to process it. So we're going to cut out a bunch of stuff that we don't need, and then take what we do. Let's check it out. So now that we've collected some data, I can go in and delete things that we definitely don't need. This is just going to be a center console, so I don't need all of the stuff I collected on the outside of where this is going to go. And getting rid of more data points is going to really help the computer process this. Now I've got this thing chopped down to what I think is useful. So I'm gonna say, great, process it. So now we're gonna generate point clouds from this data that it collected. And then from that, we're gonna make a mesh. We're basically gonna turn it into an STL file. Now technically, if you had a 3D printer big enough, you could try to print this, but it's kind of just an infinitely flat plane. So it probably won't work without some manipulation and some CAD software. So I'm gonna make this into an SDL and then we'll take a look at it when I get it into CAD. So there were a couple main reasons why I wanted to build this console. One, this is what I was using. This was out of the manual S10, the green one. And uh, this cup holder is basically useless. Uh, every time I take a turn, if I have a cup in here, it just falls on my leg. So, pretty useless. 
The other thing is that this shifter that I'm using in this truck did come with its own housing, but kind of looks like it belongs in a classic car or something like that. And damn, is this thing a classic? <sighs> I'm getting old. Anyway, I had this thing originally mounted to kind of just a temporary plate, and this isn't the strongest thing. It was held to the body by self-tappers. So we're getting away from that. Also, I based my whole design off of getting rid of this housing, which means I need something for this to attach to. So my plan here is basically just make a metal housing that's going to hold this thing to the floor, and then the whole console is going to attach to this. Seems good, right? Let's see what happens. So we got our shifter mount. That actually went together pretty nice. That actually goes in and comes back out. Probably nicer than I expected it to. We'll see how that goes after I finish weld it, but I'm gonna make sure it goes in and also comes back out. So I also made these little brackets 3D printed that attach to the side. And all of this kind of just locks together. It was a lot of designing, but I wanted all of these pieces to fit together so they would kind of hold themselves together. And then I could use a few screws to do some final fastening and tighten everything up. So there's a lot of things that go into designing something and having it function properly. You can get as creative as you want. You know, take chances, especially when you're 3D printing. What's the worst that's gonna happen? You lose some filament and you gotta print it again? I mean, I guess just don't use the really expensive filament up front. Maybe start with something else like PLA. With this design, I really wanted everything to lock together before I even used fasteners. So I knew everything was lined up and then in the end, used some fasteners. So to get things to align, I incorporated some dovetail grooves that have the corresponding dovetail on other pieces. I also did some hook and catch where some parts will slide together and have a little hook that catches on. And now that part is attached. I did that in a couple locations. Basically, I just was trying to eliminate all degrees of freedom in each component as it went together. And then at the end, a couple fasteners just for reinforcement. So I'm gonna put this thing together and we'll see what it looks like. That's pretty cool, but is it gonna fit in the truck? Nice. So I do plan to put the carpet back in. So I basically made this the controlling point for the height of this thing. So if it doesn't sit perfectly right on this bracket, I can modify the bracket a little bit and not have to reprint any of these pieces. So I designed it so that this would hold it about a half an inch off the floor. Hopefully I can get away with just doing a little bit of shimming to make sure this sits right, but we'll find out.
That ain't going nowhere. <laughs> well, I think this thing turned out pretty nice. I'm at least pretty happy about it. But uh, yeah, it's done. All I have left to do is put the other seat in, but I don't think you really need to see that. But thanks for watching. Leave a comment. If you have any other ideas for something like this, let me know. So I designed this to be modular so that these pieces come back apart and I can always change it in the future. I like to change things pretty often, so I was just kind of thinking ahead. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>